Hi, I'm Kirby Allison, and in today's video, we're going to review a pair of bespoke shoes from China. The latest trend in high-end shoemaking are fully hand-welted bespoke shoes coming out of China. And in today's video, I'm excited to review the second pair that has been sent to us to consider. The first pair that was sent to us was from the Signet store based in Singapore, but still fully hand welted and handmade in China. This second pair of shoes is from Wayman Bespoke, a company founded by Simon Wayman, uh, technically based in Germany, but again having all of their shoes uh, handmade bespoke from China. So let's take a look. All right. So what we have here, of course, is a beautiful pair of Capto uh, Oxfords. This is in a nice kind of burgundy color. Uh, I worked with Simon to, to specify kind of what I wanted here. Uh, and this is technically a bespoke shoe. I took my own measurements. They sent a trial shoe that I tried on and gave some feedback on. Uh, and then this pair came in the mail. Now this is a fully a handmade shoe. So the base price of a pair of uh, handmade shoes from Wayman Bespoke is 750 euros plus an extra 250 euros if you want the outsole sewn on by hand and then the fitting shoe is an additional 115 euros if you want to validate the measurements uh, and then these came with the hinge shoe trees which cost an extra 90 euros so the cost of these shoes came in at 1,200 euros, about $1,400, uh, which makes them not an inexpensive pair of shoes. They're priced around the same ballpark as a pair of Edward Greens or even Gaziano and Girlings, uh, kind of ready to wear factory made Goodyear welted shoes. But for $1,400, you're not getting a mass produced factory made Goodyear welted leather dress shoe. Uh, this is a totally handmade shoe, hand welted uh, with the outsole sewn on by hand for all intents and purposes, the same quality and workmanship as bespoke. Uh, but in today's video, we're gonna take a look at these and I'm gonna give you my honest opinion of what I think. Now first, a little bit about Wayman Bespoke. So Wayman, founded by Simon Wayman, based in Germany, uh, was a company that was really created to democratize bespoke, if you will, by really leveraging the fact that China has very low labor rates. So of course, because of the low cost of labor, uh, a Chinese uh, shoe factory is able to make a bespoke, totally handmade pair of shoes for a fraction of what it would cost a European country to do that. So, I mean, if you're looking at a pair of bespoke shoes from London, you're paying at least 5,000 US dollars all the way up to seven. And here, supposedly, or at least they claim, you've got the same workmanship uh, in a shoe that is uh, easily 20% of the cost. And so this is a really interesting kind of phenomenon that's going on in the menswear space right now. Uh, in some ways mirroring what happened with menswear with suits, you know, 20, 30 years ago. 20, 30 years ago, of course, you know, the best bespoke suits uh, coming out of the world were, of course, out of Europe, out of London. Uh, and that's still true today. But you can find some Chinese-based or Hong Kong-based bespoke tailors that do an exceptional job really replicating the quality. Uh, as many of you on this channel know, the majority of my wardrobe is all from him or Johnny Brothers or Davidge.com, all handmade out of Hong Kong, uh, but for a fraction of the cost of that same handmade suit would be out of London. Now, is it the same quality? No, uh, but it's pretty dang near close of it for a fraction of the price. So you've got like 90% of the quality uh, for at least 20% uh, of the cost of what that suit costs coming out of London. The same thing is happening with shoemaking right now with this new breed of handmade Chinese shoemaking factories that are popping up, trying to replicate the quality of handmade shoes coming out of London and most of Europe. So this is the pair of shoes that Simon made for me. Uh, and really on first review, uh, it is a, a very well executed pair of shoes. Uh, and so if you look at the workmanship of this shoe, uh, really technically looking at it, uh, it's really done quite well. Uh, I mean, again, I can't see the hand welting because of the soles on it. Uh, but if you look at the outsole, this is sewn on by hand. It's done very nicely. This welt's trimmed down. It's well fudged, which is the small indentations on top of the outsole. Uh, the pattern is sewn together very nice. It's got a very high stitch density. It has a nice kind of aesthetic and shape to the overall shoe. It's a very high quality leather. 
Apparently they source the same leathers that most of uh, the uh, EU and British bespoke shoemakers use. Very nice high quality leather. A nice kind of swan's neck detail. Again, good arch support right through here. Again, you can see that um, the hand outsole stitching through this arch right here. Uh, and then the heel is nice. It's got a nice pitch to it. Again, supposedly totally a uh, handmade, you know, kind of in the bespoke tradition. Uh, and so again, you look at this trimmed very nicely. We've got a one piece or seamless heel. Uh, this is done very well. It's clipped in. Again, hinge shoe tree. I mean, for 90 uh, euros, I mean, this is an absolutely exceptional shoe tree. Uh, hinged, right? It's well hollowed out. It's got these large uh, breathing holes that not only lighten the shoe tree, but allow the uh, shoe to breathe a more better. Uh, and then again, nice large kind of hole taken out right there. Again, reducing weight, uh, increasing breathability. Uh, and then of course, this is a fully lasted shoe tree that is basically a copy of the last that was used to make this shoe. Looking inside again, uh, very nicely done. It's fully lined. Uh, it's got a what looks to be a two piece sock, right? So two or three pieces, I can't totally tell. Uh, I can see where the hand welting is done on the inside. So you can kind of see the rippling uh, on the insole. Uh, and then if you turn it over and look at the bottom making, the bottom making is very nice. I mean, it's got a nice narrow uh, kind of beveled waist, great arch support that I pointed out early, earlier, nice finishing to the outsole. Now uh, you can choose to have this inked or not. Again, you can go through the entire customization process. Uh, and I'd say that again, invisible channel stitching, uh, that technically uh, this shoe uh, is made really nicely. So, you know, if you're someone that just has an impossible to fit uh, foot, or if you're someone that really wants something done particularly, uh, or if you're someone that just really loves the idea of a handmade, hand welted pair of shoes, uh, and I'm willing to spend what isn't an insignificant amount of money at $1,400, uh, then these offerings of bespoke, fully handmade shoes out of China, like what Wayman Bespoke is offering, uh, is a really viable option for someone like you. Now, how does that stack up against the European makers? I don't know. I mean, it's definitely going to be interesting to see how this uh, really evolves. Um, I had an opportunity to try these on. Uh, and I think that this gets into the nuance of where it's more difficult for the Chinese to really copy uh, the Europeans than they would like to think it is. Uh, because at the end of the day, a bespoke shoe really is a three-dimensional kind of replication of your foot. Uh, and really more than anything else, it's sculpture. Uh, there's a lot of technical details because the foot has a tremendous amount of bones in it. Uh, it's a very important uh, part of the body uh, and it's very technical and very complicated. And so to just kind of take measurements and then turn it into a three-dimensional uh, representation of that foot that not only is beautiful, uh, but it also comfortable uh, is actually more difficultly done than you would think. And so therein lies the challenge with bespoke shoemaking and why you have bespoke glass makers that have spent their entire lives, you know, really studying and evolving their craft. So also taking a first look at these, uh, compared to my other shoes, what's interesting is they're a little bit on the narrow side. Uh, so again, uh, there's just something off about the overall aesthetic of this that I can't quite put my finger on yet. It looks a little bit on the narrow side. Uh, I honestly already tried this shoe on, so I know that it's a little bit narrow. Uh, and so I can't exactly tell you what it is, but again, you know, managing this process by such a uh, far kind of a distance uh, is uh, by someone that's never met you with you taking your own measurements uh, really leaves a lot of margin of error uh, for getting this right. Uh, even with the fitting shoe, again, it's difficult to know what is, uh, what's good and what's not. But at the end of the day, the shoe has to fit and it has to fit well because if it doesn't, you're not going to wear it. So let's try these on and I'll let you know what I think.
Okay, so I'm wearing the shoes right now. Uh, and uh, I have to say they fit well. Uh, I mean, I don't want to be too critical uh, just because, you know, they're not made by Heritage British Bespoke Shoemaker. Uh, I mean, I think Wayman at Bespoke does a good job at really getting close to the mark. Uh, but my problem with most things coming out of uh, Hong Kong or China uh, is that some of the more subtle, nuanced points are always missed. And uh, that's even true with the tailoring that comes out of Hong Kong, even after all these years of having done it. Uh, now, a few observations on these shoes. Uh, first, uh, they seem initially to be a little bit on the narrow side and somehow a little long. Whenever I look down and look at these, uh, you know, it seems that the toe caps, you know, really are barely, uh, you know, clearing my toes. Uh, it just seems a, a little bit narrower and more elongated last. Now also, there seems to be something slightly off just in the balance of the insole where uh, you, the forward part of my foot is kind of falling off uh, in the front. It's not totally flat. Uh, now, I'm not a bespoke shoemaker. I really couldn't tell you, um, you know, kind of all the intricacies of why that may uh, be happening, but it seems like maybe something related to the toe spring uh, is just not on point. So I'm going to give these shoes a little bit of an extended test, if you will, uh, to, uh, to wear them uh, several times, break them in, and really see how they feel, you know, after five, six, 10 uh, times that I've worn them. So uh, we'll come back with a more in-depth review because I think this topic deserves a little bit more attention uh, as to whether or not these a new breed of Chinese bespoke shoemakers are able to hit the mark. Uh, but I have to say it's pretty close. And I think like with all things bespoke, uh, if you're committed enough to the idea, you know, through iteration, you should always be able to get to something that is, um, that is certainly uh, acceptable, if not very satisfactory. So there you go. Uh, the other benefit of bespoke shoemaking uh, over bespoke tailoring is that you don't have the variability of the cloth that uh, impacts the way that the pattern fits every single time. Uh, presumably or theoretically with a bespoke shoe, uh, once you land on the last that you're really happy with, you should be able to have as many pairs of shoes made from that, uh, from as many different materials or colors or finishes or styles, uh, and really have them fit exactly the same. Again, once that last is really kind of settled, then the consistency from pair to pair uh, is really uh, very tight. So there we go. Certainly one benefit of bespoke uh, shoe making over suit making. Okay, so I just pulled the shoes off and here they are. Uh, again, very nice example of a totally handmade pair of shoes. At $1,400, it's really hard to beat. And the real question here is whether or not they're able to nail the fit and the overall uh, balance of the aesthetic uh, in a way that makes these shoes something that you're gonna fall in love with and wanna wear over and over and over again. Uh, as I stated earlier, uh, all things bespoke are subject to iteration. I've had very few bespoke shoemakers, even the English ones, uh, nail a bespoke shoe that first time. You always need to get it, wear it, uh, see how it feels after it's broken in, and then adjust and evolve that last. But after two or three pairs, you should be able to really settle in uh, on a fit that doesn't need to be changed, that allows a pair after pair after pair to be made with that bespoke consistency and fit. And that really is what makes bespoke bespoke. So uh, we're gonna wear these uh, a few times. I'm gonna try to wear them as much as possible, break them in, and really kind of see what I think, you know, after a prolonged trial, if you will. So uh, we'll check back in with you with another video. Um, otherwise, you can find more information about Wayman Bespoke, of course, on Instagram. Uh, we've got links in the description of this video. Let me know what you think. Would you consider a bespoke pair of shoes uh, out of China for $1,400? It's a pretty compelling price point. Still an expensive shoe, uh, and it's too expensive to get wrong. And that is, at the end of the day, the question. Of course, I'm Kirby Allison, and I love to help the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes while exploring the world of quality craftsmanship and tradition. Thanks for watching.